Welcome to Material UI React Tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about Material UI and how you can use it to quickly build a React web application from scratch. There are two prerequisites that you need to meet in order to easily follow this tutorial. First, you need to have Node installed on your machine so that you can install packages with NPM. In fact, I would recommend that you use a Node version manager so you can keep multiple versions of nodes on your machine. An official page with instructions for installation can be found on GitHub and I will be posting a link somewhere in the video as well. Secondly, you need to have a working knowledge of HTML, CSS and React.js. Otherwise, you won't be able to follow the tutorial. Now, let's get back to the main topic. What is Material UI? Material UI is a React implementation of Google's Material Design System. It is a well-maintained open source library, which has over 6 million monthly NPM downloads and 60,000 GitHub stars. It has a very good list of reusable components that you can use to make any web application. Some examples of the components include buttons, layout components, uh, tooltips, form components, and more. Now, Google Material Design System, though, is a high-level set of design principles, tokens, and philosophies Google uses internally to create consistent, high-quality UI and UX across all its products, such as YouTube, Google Clouds, Gmail, and more. You probably don't need to know Google Material Design in order to use its React implementation. With that said, let's play around with the library and you'll see just how easy it is to use. We're going to build a very basic dashboard that has a navigation bar and an area for content with some filtering UI. To keep this video focused on the library, there will be no backend or database work so this is strictly UI focused tutorial. So let's get started. For this, we will start from the basic installation of React and Material UI. For the installation of Material UI, NPM must be installed on your system. So first you have to create a React project. There are many ways to set up a React project, but the easiest way is by using the tool called create React app. So open up the terminal and run the following command. You can replace React Material Tutorial with the name of your application. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I will call the application React Material Tutorial. By using the npx command, we're able to execute Create React App in one single line without the need to download and install it first. Having executed the command, a new project directory called React Material Tutorial will be created. Next, we need to change our work directory by using the command cd react material tutorial. Now, we install material UI by using this npm command npm install material UI forward slash core. You must also add at material UI forward slash icons if you intend to use the icons provided by material UI. In fact, this project will use these icons, so we will need to install them too. Now we have to add the font used by material UI. Open the index HTML from the public folder and add the following tag inside the head section. Your head section should look like this now. Now run the application by going back to the project root and running the following command, npm start. This will start the web server and run your web application. So now when you type http colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3000 forward slash in your browser, you will see the bootstrap web application. Of course, this app currently doesn't look any way close to our intended UI. So let's change that. Now we will add a navigation bar to our application Material UI demo. We will create a new component which will be added as a navigation bar. For this, create a new subfolder named components in the src directory. Add a new file navigationbar.js.
First, you'll need to import React in order to use JSX syntax in your file. So import that. Then add the following components from the Material UI package. App bar, toolbar, topography, icon button, and menu icon. Now let's create the bar component itself. It will be a simple React functional component, which will compose all the Material UI components, which were previously imported. It's also very important that you also export the navigation bar so other files can use it. Now, app.js is our main entry point to the web application. We definitely want to remove all the bootstrapped code. We will insert a simple H1 tag just to show you what the end result is going to look like after removing all the boilerplate code. After deleting it, your web application will look like this when you open localhost colon 3000. This is perfect because we never needed the default UI that we previously had anyway. Then let's import the navigation bar and put it into our app code. Now here's the result. Now it is missing something, but before we start styling our application, let me explain how Material UI thinks you should be styling its components. First, Material UI uses JSS for styling. It's a JavaScript based way to add CSS to components. Advantages of using Material UI styling. One, it is fast for JS based styling. Two, it allows you to do co-located styles, which prevents the problem of global CSS name clashes. Three, it provides an easy to use JS-based interface for creating dynamic styles. And four, it is actually less than 15 kilobytes gzipped and bundle size does not increase if you use it alongside Material UI. If you want to use a different way to style your app, you are free to do so. However, you might find that material UI components in other ways will be much harder, if not impossible, at times simply because of the way the props are exposed. Let's change navigationbar.js to the material UI styling library. So first, add make styles and make this hook called use styles. Once you've done that, now let's put the use styles into our React component. This added a little bit of margin in the menu icon, as you can see. If you ask me, it's kind of useless, but it just serves as an illustration of how to use Material UI styling functions. Next, what kind of navigation bar it is if we don't add the menu to its end? Let's add a menu at the end. For that, we need to import these components, as you can see. Then we will need to add a way to manage the state of the menu button. If you think about it, you need to track when the menu is open, when it is closed, and what triggers it to close or open. To do that, we will use React hooks in order to manage the internal state of the component. Now, let's not forget to add the actual menu button and the menu draw at the end of our component. When we reload the page, we will see the updated navbar, but it looks weird. The button shouldn't be close to the title. We can fix this by making the title grow via flex grow. Then we add the title class to the title like this. 
And here's the end result. Now, on clicking on the icon on the right side of the navigation bar, it will display menu items. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we will implement a header, search box, show dropdown, and menu dropdown. For this, we'll add a new file called searchbox.js in the components folder. Let's import that which we need in advance. We will need the React, Grid, Typography, and Styles because those are the typical building blocks for our search box. We will also import these three components to build a select box. Lastly, we will import the remaining components to build a search input. For the state management, we will have two variables to which the page count and the view mode of our data. Since we're using a functional React component instead of class-based component, we will use hooks to define the component state. Now, let's build a skeleton of our search box. Now, if you reload it, you'll see a very bad looking UI. Let's fix it by adding the styles. So we added styles to the title container, background color to the search box, some flex stretching to the container, and some animation that happens when you focus on the search bar input. Now, here's the result. We didn't handle responsiveness, which in a normal web application, you normally should, but it should work for the purposes of the tutorial. Lastly, let's try and add a data table of projects to our app. Add the new JS file projectList.js in the components folder. Now let's add it to the app.js.
And here's the final output. As you can see, it is quite easy to set this up. The components come with nice features like focus animation, interaction feedback, so you don't have to do it yourself. I highly recommend the library if you are building out a new project and you don't want to, or you don't have the resources to build your own design system from scratch. If you want to dive deeper into Material UI, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like the content we are providing, please like and subscribe to help us grow the channel. Thank you.